Hey everybody, this is Anna here. I have a kiln unload, a much weighted kiln unload. Um, I had, this is half of the load that I have. I'm still painting other, other pieces that are gonna be with that corda seca technique. And I decided to separate the two loads because the other load doesn't require the uh, slow cool or hold because it's stroke and coat basically so i might do just a, a very small hold like five minutes or something and then um, just a regular cone 5.5 is what i always shoot for uh, sometimes it gets to a cone six but i don't like going higher than that so i'm always looking for better lighting but i think the best lighting is the natural lighting here uh, even though it's overcast uh, i still bright who knows maybe the sun sun will come up um so let's do it okay so this is the test piece that i did is porcelain and colors are real pretty i did half and half on this one uh but it plucked the bottom part a little bit because i i i was afraid it was gonna run off the pot but it didn't but what i did is i put it on a cookie that i had already used before so it's porcelain and it's already vitrified and you know when porcelain uh is notorious for doing that plucking especially if i had it over another piece like a tile like this of porcelain so i should have put kiln wash or alumina hydrate on this one but i did i didn't so it plucked a little bit in here and the reason why it was a test piece it, it had um a little surface crack nothing on the inside and sometimes porcelain develops these uh uh, surface cracks so I just figure I'll just make a bowl for myself and I added these little curves uh, three points here just to add something different anyways this is uh, oops just another piece came off huh I have to grind so it's not nothing sharp here on the bottom um, so i did the river birch two times with one one coat of uh flux honey flux uh, and that was from lisa finko i think she did that and i liked her results so i decided to do that i'm pretty new to river birch i just started using the last kiln load i just did the test tiles uh, and i liked it and I also liked with the honey flux over. It's almost like a satin, shiny satin, not quite, not quite real glossy, at least on porcelain. And then, um, so I did that on both sides, uh, on in and out, all over. And then I used um, Atlantis Aqua, Laguna Atlantis Aqua on this side, and then Castillo Blue on this side with some pearl white over, and it dripped all the way to, to the middle here, creating kind of like a, a tan line here. I'm not crazy about that, but I can still use it. There's no pinholes or anything. It's very smooth. Same thing here. So I think once I grind these pieces that plucked, I'll be fine and I, I'll be able to use it. So very pretty combination, I like it. Here is another, um, that's that soap dish that I made for myself. Um, and this is Deep Sea by Amico Celadon and it is kind of dark. I tried it here and I tried in um, some mugs too. So now I'm worried that it might be too dark. Um, so I don't know, you can still see the design, but I wonder if I should put something lighter over another type of celadon over this, just to see if I can get it a little lighter color. You can still see 
the design but this is from that demo i did for making a stamp uh so that's okay i made it for me so i can put my i have soap bars there large rectangular so these could go in my bathroom um but yeah i'm, I'm gonna try putting something over and refire see if i can get a little bit lighter than that so that was it for the first one uh main the rest of this stuff is all i have two more shelves so ooh, it's cold so i have another test uh let me see yep it's a little planter that i did with this kind of design like that because uh, this is porcelain when i was throwing um something went off the roundness it was got off centered and it really wasn't working out for me and so i decided to cut the top part and then save it and save as a little planter and i decided to put these designs and i i pressed the clay in four places and I put these little nibs here that looks almost like a, a drop, a little droplet shape right in the, in, in the middle. And I wanted the glaze to drip in here. So I was kind of strategically putting the glazes how I wanted it to look. And, and it did sort of what I did, what I wanted. See how it dripped? Um, Anyways, this is the same as, um, is that the same one? Oh, no, it's a little different. So Atlantis Aqua, about an inch. And then I left a little gap, and then I used the Indigo Float, another band, kind of going like this around, kind of rounded swipes of the Indigo Float glaze. And then kind of halfway meeting that, the indigo float, I used the um, uh, flux blossom in here. And then, uh, actually, no, sorry, not, not flux blossom. Um, river birch with one, two times with one of uh, honey flux. <laughs> So many fluxes now that I've, I've been using. I, I'm, I'm loving these flux glazes from Emico. So yeah, three of River Birch, one of uh, Honey Flux. And it's a more subtle look. I agree with Lisa Finkel on that. Uh, she's the one that showed us how she does this combination here. Um, so, and then Pearl White halfway. Same thing on the bottom. Look at the drips. And it never went. It stopped right there. And see how it has a crack also in the middle where I put the hole? It had a crack. But I was worried that it was going to leak through the cracks, but it never did. So that would be cute with a little succulent plant and that. And then that's the little tray. Same thing, river birch with one of, I mean, two river birch and one um, honey flux. And it never, I put it, I paint it right to the, clo real close to the bottom, maybe about an eighth of an inch from the bottom, and it never ran off. So it goes like that. It's cute. And another piece that's gonna be mine. <laughs> so, let me show you the one that I decided to refire, and I'm glad I did. Remember this bird? <laughs> My parrot that was sculpted. Um, so, what was wrong with that one? It had, it was kind of patchy on the cirrus flow here on the bottom. So, and, um, Oh, also, there were part of those mugs that kind of touched 
uh, the bottom a little bit, the alumina hydrate, because I had like clumps of alumina hydrate that I didn't, I overlooked. And I decided to put more clear glaze on the bottom, sand it just slightly, and then put clear glaze. And then uh, I put Cirrus Flow again, one coat everywhere. And the way I do it, when I refire, I use uh, uh, Elmer's glue, the, the, the gel, the clear one. I let it dry. I put it in and out and then let it dry. And then you glaze it. And that seems to hold the glaze a little better on top of the other glaze. So that's how I do my refires. And I think it paid off because you see how it covered more of the patchy um, blue that I had in here. It wasn't too thick, so you could see. It didn't crawl or anything, but you, you could see when it's patchy, it gets thinner in some areas, and you can see the clay. Um, I did the same thing here. I put another one coat of uh, Cirrus Flow, but I love this effect here. It has a uh, blue aisle, it's a stroke and coat, make a stroke and coat, blue aisle on top of Cirrus Flow and then Pearl White. And Pearl White makes everything drippy, but it has this real subtle uh, look to it with the drips. So I'm really happy that nothing happened to the underglaze. Underglazes didn't change the color or my hibiscus flower stayed intact so yay happy that i refired this so i'm gonna end up refiring the other ones i just wanted to try in one see how it would work and then i'll refire the other ones that touch the bottom too so it looks like it's gonna work so this one is my cockatoo and it has some appliques of um, monstera leaves. And then on the background, I carved, relief carved the, these leaves here, like banana leaves. And I have some there are just looks like leaves, like on a branch falling. And then here I have uh, birds of paradise in between the two leaves and more of the, of the vine with leaves. Uh, so these are all under glazes and all I did is I put clear glaze where it's painted with under glazes and then for the green leaves on the background I used uh, just brushed on very carefully so it would stay within the design. I brushed uh, Celsor Oribe which is uh, a glaze that I mix. Um, and then I wanted something to go with the pink, you know, to pull the pink from the cockatoo. So I decided to use Flux Blossom, which is a real pale pink. I don't know if you can see, it is kind of pale. So I went in between the design and I used that. And then inside I used the Cirrus, uh, not Cirrus Flow. Fairy Rose, same thing on the handle. Uh, it, it looks like it got a little too thick here on the handle and a little bit thick also on the bottom. So I might add some clear glaze and refire just to see if I can smooth it out. There's no pinhole. It just feels like bumpy and I think when it's thick, so this glaze has worked beautifully on other pieces that I have, on other mugs. Um, so what I've learned from this is that it likes to be thin. So one thing that I noticed with the Fairy Rose is the first one that I've ever bought and I used it, uh, it was very thin, almost like you could pour, you know, it, it was thin. So, and I was almost running out. So I went ahead and I bought another jar. Well, the, th the second jar, it was completely different. It was like thick. So I don't know, I don't know what's wrong with these glazes. You know, sometimes you get something that is real thin, sometimes it's real thick. 
um, and I can't remember now what I use if I use the new batch or the old batch in here but or it could be that I just put it too thick of a coat so I need to I think I can fix it though but it's cute yeah, it's just no pinholes or anything. It's just, I wonder if you guys can see it. It just got kind of like, almost like uh, a little bumpy, like kind of thick on the bottom. So we'll see if I can fix it. Um, so this one, I'm very happy with the colors on this one. Um, so here's the design all around. It's my toucan, toucan, uh, mug. Yeah, it looks like the sun is coming out. Maybe I'll have to move inside a little bit. So I'm pretty happy with the colors on this mug. Um, even though they say you should never put new glazes on the pieces that, you know, you should test them first. But I bought the blue, uh, deep sea, um, and again, I think I saw it from Lisa Frank Finko, and I really liked the deep sea, so I didn't have it, and I bought it to try because I like, I love blue and green, so, uh, and I wanted to have that contrast in colors, like for a background, you know. So I decided to go ahead and and use it. <laughs> So the, the blue that you see, the deeper blue is deep sea. And then brushed on, I used um, my Celso Orb because it's it's carved and I, I wanted to show the carving. You know, it's relief carved. And so over the deep sea is um, uh, seaweed. And I saw this in one of the groups um uh, on facebook and i loved how it looks so i wonder if you guys can tell like look at the the nice runs that happens and you still it, it's still translucent but it gives a real nice effect here with deep sea over um uh, no sorry <laughs> seaweed over deep sea so seaweed amico, deep sea amico also, celadon, and it gives a real nice, I think I'll be using this combo more often now, now that I see the results. And then the rest is all uh, painted with underglazes and then clear glaze over. So I'm really happy with this guy. Cute. Oh, and inside is my uh, seltzer chun, which I have the recipe at my community under the community tab. I have, I put posted several glazes, some of my favorite glazes that I mix. And if you guys want, I, I need to make more of this glaze so I can show exactly how I make it. But it is a beautiful, beautiful glaze on any any that i've tried any clay clay body so this is porcelain and you know how porcelain sometimes it uh it crazes the glaze but this one doesn't so look how shiny and smooth it is and it's a beautiful turquoise color very pretty and it looks like the um seaweed Got, I think I put a little bit on the rim and it ran a little bit on the, on top of the turquoise also, the salsa chan. And, you know, that's a nice glaze also to use other glazes over because it, it makes the, some real nice subtle runs. You don't, it doesn't show like a dividing line, you know. So look at, look at this. That's the seaweed over the seltzer chun which is the turquoise one it's very nice so this is my jar 
that I did with the uh, blue bird. Uh, I'm not that happy with how this looks right here. Um, so I'll definitely gonna refire this, and I know exactly what happens on will ha what happened here. So um, my flux blossom was almost towards the end, and I added more water to kind of pour. So I I poured. Uh, the whole thing was poured with um, Flux Blossom, Amico, but I can see that it was thin because I can almost see the clay on the background. So because of that, my runs kind of look weird. It didn't really run like, like this. That's what I was looking for, and it didn't do it, so... I think I'm just going to add uh, pearl white over. So it's flux blossom all the way. I did uh, use um, blue aisle on the lid. It's um, stroke and coat. I love this color. So it almost looks like power turquoise. And then I used that here also on the rim. And then um i left a gap and then i used the indigo float and then i put the pearl white over both thinking that it was gonna run you know all the way but it didn't so this would be a good candidate for a refire here the sun is not shining now the sun's trying to come out so now it's less of the glare and I did that alumina hydrate on the on the gallery, and it works great because it comes right off. I always glaze the inside part here, and then it's glazed with my um, seltzer chan again, the turquoise. Same same thing on the inside has that little swirl, but I'm happy. I think this would be nice after I refire. Look at the bird, isn't he cute? That's a bluebird, Eastern bluebird. I don't know if there are other types of bluebird, but that's the one that we see mostly here in Georgia. It's all done with under glazes and then under glazes see on the leaves. But I love him. <laughs> He's so cute. I love my birds. So this is a different vase that I <laughs> decided to do. Very different. Um, I don't think I've ever done this form. It's just a little bud vase um, with dark star. And by the way, the ones that you see with the speckles, uh, clays, dark star stoneware by Kentucky Mud Works. It's a light uh, color clay. It's, n it's an off-white with, with real dark specks on it. Um, and I believe they call it dark star because the specks really shine through. They're shiny specks. So anyways, this is uh, cactus all over. And I put these cute little handles. And then I did appliques of Monstera, kind of a drift of Monstera leaves. And I used the uh, Mako Ivy, which I'm not crazy about it, but I knew it would show the texture on it because I had carved, you know, all the veins. I might have to move my phone now because of the glare. Anyways, that's ivy, and what I see now is that on the holes here of the of my monstera leaf, it got a little too thick, and it bubbled up just a little bit here. So I'm gonna refire this, put more glaze just in here. Um, I will probably I don't know, maybe I'll put pearl white. Pearl white seems to be my go-to glaze to smooth things out. So, and it is translucent, so maybe that's what I would do. I'll use that.
but yeah i didn't like only here on these two areas that bubbled so i'm gonna refire this one but i'm in love with this uh, cactus it's such a nice pretty green especially on this speckled clay it is nice Ah, uh, so my two uh, best pieces, I, actually I have three that I was really worried and just from what I can see here, it looks like it worked. So I um, don't want to say too much yet, but my teapot, wow, it worked out exactly as I thought you would you know the colors and everything so look at this <laughs> i'm very happy with it and the lid comes right off yes but you see there is a powder that remains in here from the alumina hydrate and the reason why i do it together is because porcelain can deform or warp um more with porcelain than other stoneware you know clay bodies but so i like to fire together so i use the alumina hydrate also so you don't have that plucking effect like i talked before that it happens a lot with porcelain but look at the details and i think i'm gonna make a video on how i make this flower as i did not use a mold these are all done each petal individually almost like a paste uh, of porcelain um, it's like a bow relief i don't know if you guys are familiar with that that's what i used here you create a paste and i i mix the clay um, the porcelain with some under glazes that were like a peachy color or pink and then you go with a little knife, that palette knife, and you kind of smear the clay and start forming um, your flower. And this is just hand sculpted. And then on the back, okay, so the back is Cirrus Flow, also on the handle. And then um, in between here, I use the My Blue Haven, which is also a light blue, and it matches the Cirrus Flow really well, except that this one is very stable. That's why I used it here in the front between the design, because if I had used Cirrus Flow, it would probably cover my design. So I wanted to ha use something stable that wouldn't run. Same thing here on the lid. I wanted something stable so you wouldn't run into the gallery. I use my Celso Chan um, turquoise inside. This has a little steam hole here. I don't know if you can see right there. So it's a completely functional teapot. I do the holes right here that acts like a little drain. Uh, let's see if you can see. It's kind of hard to see because the handle is on the way. I think you can see a little bit there. Um, and another tip that I learned, can't remember where I saw that, but it seems to really work. To avoid drip uh, when you pour the tea, is you wipe the glaze from the very tip of your spout. Wipe it off so there is no glaze right on the very tip and that keeps the water, the liquid from running. It stops right there every time. So you pour, uh, I'll make a video of that actually, how you can pour and then when you lift it, it doesn't dribble. So that's another trick I learned for teapots. So but i'm happy with the the shape and the design i had never done this design before as you know i like tropical things and i have these roses i planted uh, it's called peach drift i have that on my backyard 
And that's where I got my inspiration from. And I just loved how this one. I'm sorry that if I'm taking too long, but I'm in love with this one. Anyways, it, it was also Celso Ori by Dead on the Leaves. And then My Blue Haven and Sirius Flow. So I kept it simple. Ah, oh, and my, I was so worried about this piece. Oh my gosh. And I was also worried that I used a new glaze for the first time on this piece. So that was kind of uh, a risk. I took a risk on this one. Uh, so this is Honeydew. I bought Honeydew. Thanks, uh, Sarah Walton. I saw on her videos and I loved it. So I used Honeydew all over on the, on the back. And then Sirius Flow all over, all the way to here. So Sirius Flow inside, Honeydew on the outside. And it has the subtle light green. I wanted to keep it very like pastel colors. And then on the rim, I used Indigo Float because I wanted to match the bird. It's also a blue bird. So I use indigo float because it has that same blue in and out. So about an inch and on the rim and then pearl white to encourage the drips. Same thing here. And then these are all, was all done with done the glazes, the little egg and the nest and the uh, branch that is sitting right on top. And then seltzer orb for my leaves. And these were very tricky to do because I had to actually use an applicator to squirt the glaze inside because I wanted to have everything glazed. So I used an applicator to squirt the glazes all inside here, inside each leaf. So, but again, this is a functional bowl. Wouldn't that be beautiful to serve a salad in here? <laughs> I'm very happy with this piece. And look at the bird. Look at my little blue bird. All under glazes. And is that it for, oh, this is my comb pack. That's comb five and comb six. So it got to be like comb 5.5, I believe. It didn't quite make it to comb six and that was fine. Um, I do have some test styles in here. So, okay, so this one is Coastal Blue by Clayscapes. And thanks to uh, Tiffany from Hobble Creek Pottery. Um, I've tried, I think I saw her, one of her kiln unloads that had a beautiful. The Coastal Blue worked out really well for her, and then I, I bought it uh, It's a dipping glaze. Uh, but I could, never, I could never get the real nice kind of blue, and I think it works better on a darker clay. So this one is Brownstone, uh, Speckled Brownstone by High Water Clay. Um, it's a darker clay, speckled, but I finally got a nice, blue gray i think i got so as compared to one is the same coastal blue on the dark star which is a lighter clay body but look at the the difference this one doesn't have much color 
at all. This one does have does show more of the bluish, you know. So I'm much happier with this result here. So finally, I think I got something good out of this glaze. And thank you again, Tiffany. And this one, I'm going to post this on uh, my Unloved Glaze uh, page that from Lisa Finko that um, this was Mud Waters by Mako and it's still unloved <laughs> even after I test it on. Somebody told me that it would look better on a, a lighter clay body, but it didn't. <laughs> I don't know if it's something wrong with my glaze. Can you get like a bad batch of a glaze maybe? I don't know. It's just, I've tested this now on just about every clay color that I have. Uh, dark, speckled, light. This is porcelain. And I mean, look at the, it's matte and the color is, not me at all so someone might like it but i don't like it anyways that's mud muddy waters muddy waters yeah by mako unfortunately i don't know what to do with this glaze now i own it i still full and should i keep testing it what do you guys think it's just it's not working for me <laughs> at all and that was it for this shelf wow Let me show you guys some of the colors here that i have Ooh. oh my gosh that's the other bowl here that i'm so excited to see oh, it looks like it turned out very pretty Maybe I will unload that one first since I can't wait. Ugh. Wow. <laughs> Look at these colors. Oh my word. Wow. Okay. The front looks real pretty and this is the back. It looks just as nice. So this is porcelain. Um, let me see if I remember everything that I used on this glaze. So I did in and out. The, the base coat was three coats of blue or three coats of deep sea in and out, except for the leaves. Um, then I did one coat, actually one coat around the swirly bottom here of um, seaweed. And then two coats everywhere, two coats of seaweed. And then on the back, the seaweed came to here. I didn't want to bring seaweed all the way here because I was afraid of uh, dripping all the way down but i think i went a little bit deeper with the seaweed here yeah i did go all over with the seaweed and like i said two coats of seaweed over the deep sea and then i did swipes in here i'm gonna put post a picture of i documented and thanks to sarah walton i'm doing better on my documentation <laughs> on how I, how I glaze it. And I think that's the way to do it if you want to replicate, you know, your, your glaze combination. So on top of that, I did swipes of Midnight Rain, which is also a Mako. Um, and that was just thick swipes, um, kind of random through here, about an inch or so you know, maybe an inch or two inches down. And some drips, I uh, just dripped with the brush, let it drip of uh, light flux. And that's what caused these runs with the green. 
And then my leaves are Celso Oribe, which is a, a clear, uh, translucent green. Very nice. It shows the texture. That's why I like using that over the leaves. Shows texture really well. And so the only part I do, I painted with underglazes was this cute little tropical frog and the branch. On each side, I painted the branch with different tones of uh, shades of brown and then clear glaze over. So there's got clear glaze over here, the frog and the branch, Celso Orb. Orbe, I don't know how you pronounce it, over the leaves. And then what I already said about this whole combination here, but wow. Oh, you guys have to tell me which one was your favorite. This is one of my favorites right here. So cute. I have a few more mugs that I can't wait to show you. Wow. So this is a new design I decided to do with this one is I put three bigger leaves. They almost look like tropical banana leaves or something similar. Painted, just painted with under glazes, clear glaze over. And this is my kittens clear that I use is a zinc free clear glaze that works really well on top of um on top of under glazes but look at this guy the uh, red eye tree frog and see how the leaf i i bent so it's over the rim and he's also holding on to the mug <laughs> oh, he's cute so the combination everywhere else was honeydew Flux by Amico, inside and out. Actually, no, uh, let me <laughs> back up for a, a moment here. I did, and I used an applicator to put all around. I did the uh, Blue Isles stroke and coat, and also I did swipes of um, Blue Isle through here. I did the Honeydew over that. That's why you can see the blue aisle in here. And then pearl white. And that causes all these runs. Same thing here on the handle. I put, put a little bit of that blue aisle to run in the middle. I always like to do that. I like the, the run in the middle of the, the handle. But it's a very smooth um, glaze. I'm, I'm really liking that. Very cute. Be fun to drink, and that guy is always looking at you. I made I made it that way so that when you drink out of it, he's just staring at your face. <laughs> hmm. uh, this is another one that I've never done before. With the I never done mushrooms before, so this is my first set of mushrooms. A mushroom mug and it turned out so cute uh, all done with under glazes I used uh, for the for the dots I and they're bumpy so they're in relief I used um, Mako designer liner white so I applied the thick um, um, dots and I painted these on greenware i i did all my underglaze line uh painting on greenware i also added some little moss plants here on the bottom and the frog is holding on to the mushroom isn't he cute <laughs> that's a red eye tree frog and i'm really happy with how the mushrooms turned out uh, so I score, I used an applicator because I wanted something very stable around uh, the design. So I used uh, My Blue Haven, which is that nice light blue color. 
And then everywhere else, I used uh, Cirrus Flow. Uh, and then I did um, some swipes of Fairy um, Norse Blue here on top, and then Fairy Rose, kind of swipes like that. And then Pearl White over. And I wanted the Norse Blue to go over the the fair the fairy rose to cause almost like uh the purple uh let me see it's starting to get too much glare here but it gives this subtle uh movement on the on the glaze showing a little bit of the the red or it becomes pink but anyways it, it has fairy rose and this one is fine inside so maybe i apply the thinner you know, on this one. Um, and then I used Norse Blue on the handle with a little bit of pearl white and never ran to the bottom. It stopped right there. Another thing I wanted to uh, show you guys how I do this is I, when I'm throwing, I carve a little groove on the foot and that helps with dripping off the pot. So I do that to every piece I do, I make, no matter what it is, a bowl or mugs or vase, any, anything. I, when I'm making, trimming the foot, I trimmed a groove around so that it gives, uh, it's not foolproof, but it gives an area for the glaze to, um, to stay. So chances are they don't run off the pot. So that's the purpose of that. Oh, let me see. Uh, this one I can see already that it got too thick on the bottom. So this would be another one that I'm going to uh, put some clear glaze maybe to that's fairy rose it got thick on the bottom there's no pinhole but it's kind of bumpy maybe you guys can see it right there so i think i can smooth it out with a, a coat of uh, clear glaze and this one has a little sun conure parrot and some leaves a branch and then on the background, so these were all appliques that I made. And then on the background, the leaves here are carved. And this one I did all the way around. So what I did here, I used jade, which is a celadon, uh, amico celadon. I used jade here on the top part. And then deep sea, the blue area that you see here. And then on top of jade, I used a little bit of uh, seaweed and it made some real nice, uh, subtle, but nice drips. Almost looks kind of bluish color. That turned out nice. The rest is all under glazes with clear over. And that's jade with the um, seaweed over this of the handle but yeah i'm not too happy with the bumpy um fairy rose that would be another one that i'm gonna reglaze and tell you guys how it turned out later on this one wow that one i was very excited about this one here it turned out really nice uh, this was all hand painted with under glazes but there's no carving uh, actually i did very light carving around the design on when it was still like in greenware and i painted on greenware um but wow look at it and i use honeydew inside three coats then honeydew two coats on the on this part 
this part over here was all um, clear glaze over the painting. Then I used uh, Celadon Blossom. Uh, is that the, the name? <laughs> By Mako. Is it called Celadon? I think it is. Celadon Blossom, which is the first time I use it. And I shouldn't have done it on the actual mug. I should have tested it first, but... From what I've seen results, I, I did some research and it looks so nice that I, I risked going first time using on a mug and it paid off. So what a beautiful, kind of like a, almost like an ocean, Caribbean ocean <laughs> color. Um, but I was going more for like a sky blue. It looks like that too, like a blue green aqua. I'm very happy with how that turned out. It's got some fruits. And then this is um, heliconia hanging from here, from the top. Some leaves with some nice uh, variation in colors there. So it was kind of tricky because I painted this, just brushed on the clear glaze, and then had to paint all in between with the celadon bloom. And anyways, the celadon bloom over the honeydew it is just gorgeous i don't know if the video is doing justice here but it's such a nice pastel green with the blooms you know like the crystals that melts over they're they're kind of like a off-white color on top of the nice aqua very nice I'm very happy with this one. And the honeydew is very a pretty glaze, very smooth. Um, so this one also turned out really pretty. Uh, this is my other toucan uh, mug. The, this one I put some fruits here and he's holding a berry on his beak all done with uh, underglazes, all painted. Same thing, the background are carved, relief carved, some um, bigger leaves on the back. There is uh, Birds of Paradise on the back here. And this one, I also use uh, Celso Orb, Orbe <laughs> on, on the background. The rest is all clear glaze. Um, I believe I use, I'm going to see, I'll put it on the video. If it was either watercolor blue-green or uh, seaweed that caused these runs here. Very pretty. And then on the branch is also um, done with under glazes, but I decided to put a little bit of uh, river birch on top of the clear glaze and to my surprise it turned a little bluish so you never know when you're doing something like that for the first time what you're gonna get so i'm surprised that it has a very nice uh, uh variation in color with the river birch over the clear glaze anyways that is the the branch that he's perched on like a, a tree that has come down or something and it's just part of the tree left and he's perched right in there. And then all the little vines. And by the way, I use my stamps here for the leaves, the stamps that I did the demo. And inside is um, North Blue. And again, it's either uh, watercolor blue-green on the rim uh, or seaweed. But anyways, it gives that real nice subtle drips here too inside. Yay! I'm happy with this one. Uh, by the way, the Celso Orib crackles or crazes but 
I kind of like that effect of that glaze. That's why I always use that on the outside, never on the inside, because I know it crackles. So, but I do like that effect. I don't know if I can capture here on the on the video, but it cracks even more later on. It will be more crackle effect. Ah, one more of my fairy rose. Little bumpy inside again. So I need to probably refire this one too. But I'm very happy with uh, the colors. Are Cirrus Flow. I did Cirrus Flow over the whole thing. And uh, on the outline here, with my design, I used uh, Stroke and Coat My Blue Haven, which seems to match the Cirrus Flow, which is that real light blue. I used Celso Orb on the leaves, just like the others, clear glaze over the design. That's my cute cockatoo. And then the reason why I used Fairy Rose with some of the designs that had the pink cockatoo, I wanted something that would go with it. And I thought that the pink, you know, would look cute. Not knowing that it was going to be kind of, I would have this issue. But I think it's fixable. <laughs> I hope. Anyways, here I did swipes of fairy rose and Norse blue and some pearl white. That causes that variation in pink and purple with the Norse blue. I really like that, but that's going to be refired because of the bumpiness here. No, no pinholing though, which is good. It's cute. <clears throat> and I think what I have left, oh. I do have some test styles, but wow, I almost forgot about this little, little little jar with the frog that I decided to do that on the last minute thing. This is what's done, one of those that you do a whole piece and then you use like a stick to indent um, and then you cut it off so the lid uh, goes inside nicely, it matches. So this is on uh, Dark Star, speckled, uh, it's a speckled light clay body. And look at my frog. <laughs> this has two leaves that he's holding on to. All done with under glazes. And then, this combination is becoming one of my favorites too, is two coats of um, Laguna Robin's Egg and then two coats of Laguna Spring Green. And I did it in and out. It is beautiful. Beautiful color. I'm happy with this little jar. I want to keep it for me. <laughs> Isn't he cute? So lots of froggies on this one. And some more test tiles. Uh, oh, on this bottom shelf, uh, it looks like it did get hot, uh, hotter than on the on the top on the middle shelf. Because well, this was this is con five, but it had a a stilt. So it, I mean the post. So it hit the post. So but it looks like it just melted off. This is a con six, and look how it bent. So it got a hot con six, huh? So it fired hotter on the bottom. Because I have the down draft that pulls the air, so it usually stays hotter on the, on my bottom shelf. 
and I do have some test styles. Um, I just tested which I already used. That's that's the deep sea on porcelain, deep sea on porcelain, and on dark star. It's a very pretty pretty blue so thanks lisa <laughs> for showing me this uh glaze that i really liked um this is celadon bloom yeah it is celadon bloom i was i wasn't sure the name but oh, there's a glare let's see if here is better yeah so this is on porcelain this is on dark star speckled uh, i'm in love with this now i love this color that aqua aqua color very pretty again celadon bloom ah uh, what else do i have So I tested the ivy on three different clay bodies. Um, let me move. Might be a little better here. So this is ivy on dark star. I'm not crazy about it. I think it's okay. But it has like a, almost like a satin finish. It's not really that glossy. But it does show texture. This is on the brownstone, speckled brownstone by High Water Clay. Almost has a metallic sheen to it. And this is on porcelain. You see that metallic sheen. So, and then lastly is my cactus, which I had already tested on this one uh, on Dark Star. It's a real nice. I'm really liking this cactus glaze. I'm gonna use more. It's a very pretty green, and this one is on on porcelain. Looks. Look at the difference. Let's see if I can. Seems like you can see more of a texture with on porcelain than you can on eh, maybe not i think it does show texture on both everything looks a little brighter on porcelain the colors but that's the back of it so so that's it <laughs> I am I do have some uh refires to do but not on the bigger pieces that those are the ones that I was really worried about. Ah, oh, what a relief. Um I am pretty happy with those how they turned out. I do have well like three mugs maybe in uh, that little vase that I'm going to refire and fingers crossed that I'm going to be able to fix them. Uh just the bumpiness of that glaze the uh fairy rose i have no idea what happened there i'm thinking it was just uh it was thick and it could be the new batch the clay the glaze that i got is a little bit thicker than the other one um and now i wish i had used another one one of the flux uh flux glazes that they always seem very reliable but i have i had some mugs that i have here that are beautiful with the fairy rose very smooth you know inside so 
you never know, right? Sometimes you win some and you lose some. So anyways, um, if you like this video, please like it and subscribe to my channel. Uh, I'm hoping to be done with everything by the end of this week. So by Friday is my goal to have everything done. So um, let me know what you would like to see next. Uh, and also let me know which one was your favorite piece here on this kiln load. And thank you so much for watching and thank you for your support. I want to thank uh, the people who have supported me with my, uh, the buy me a coffee. Uh, if you feel so inclined, if you like it and uh, would mean the world to me if you can help me out. I'm always buying equipment to make my videos a little better, uh, like my new mic that I purchased. Uh, anyways, I really appreciate you and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.